All right, hit that like and follow if you like full version tutorials. This is how to build a $25 end table using only one board. I used a piece of stain grade, two foot by four foot pine. You can use plywood or anything else that's at least three quarter inch thick. And then I divided my board out into sections. There's two 16 by 10 sections and two 16 by 20 sections. And along the side, I'm ripping it into four one inch sections. After cutting the boards, I assembled the box shape with wood glue and brad nails using the bigger boards on top and bottom. Next, to create the legs, cut the one inch strips so that you have four 16 inch boards for the legs and four 20 inch boards for the cross braces. Line up the four 20 inch boards together with the one inch side facing up and stagger them at a 15 degree angle using a square. Now for the tricky part. To make our cross braces fit together flush, we need to cut a one inch wide notch halfway through the board. If your board is three quarter inch thick, then you need to set your circular saw depth to about three eighths of an inch. So that one inch notch is gonna be right in the center of each board at 10 inches. So half an inch on either side of that 10 inch mark. Now using your circular saw, go to town and make that notch. And then once you're done, fit them together and glue them up with some wood glue. Next, you're gonna attach the 16 inch legs to the cross braces. You want one cross brace at the top and one in the middle. You can see here I used a six inch square to make sure that the middle cross brace was even on all sides. It should look something like this. Finally, center up the base and attach the legs to the bottom of the box using one inch screws at each corner. And now that the end table is done, it's time to paint. I chose to do the outside of mine white and leave the inside neutral. Here's a look at how I got these really sharp paint lines around the edge. Before painting the outside white, I needed to lay down a few coats of polyurethane. I used the poly as both a finish and a sealer. Occasionally when poly soaks into the wood, it can raise the fiber, so I went back with an 800 grit to sand it down smooth and followed that up with a lint-free cloth to pick up the dust before applying my final coats. And now for my secret weapon, automotive paint tape. Unlike traditional masking tape, automotive tape is designed to be curved and bent in order to make any kind of line you want and hold that line and give you a sharp result. All that was left was to apply several coats of paint, let that dry, and then peel away the tape, revealing that perfect edge that I wanted for this project. Remember to like and follow our page for more helpful tips and DIY projects.